Next up, uh, we have uh, Dr. Stephen George, who deserves a special thank you for putting all the hard work uh, along with Dr. Asper and Dr. Schepperberger for putting this program together, and he's going to uh, educate us on pore strengthening. Thank you. Uh, we're running a little bit behind schedule, and I don't want to take away from the talks from those who came in from across the country, but I'll, sh I'll shorten this one. Um, today I'm going to talk about um, core stability and the importance of exercise, and I can tell you can start at any time. I started yesterday, and I've already seen a significant improvement. So, uh, yeah. I'll first start by um, bringing up a, uh, an article that was written in 2015. Um, by another reputable um, spine group, and what they were doing was looking at return to activity protocols or um, uh, guidelines, uh, because there are very few um, uh, rigorous uh, inf articles out there that actually tell us when can patients who uh, have surgery return to activity. Uh, in that, they basically surveyed uh, several of the surgeons uh, that are part of this group and found uh, that According to these surgeons, returning to activity um, like running was at three months, non-contact and contact sports at six months, and collision sports at 12 months. Uh, but it should be noted that this was just based on surveys. It really wasn't based on any empiric data that they looked at um, that really came up with, the, with these conclusions. Uh, but this is basically uh, the best information that we have on the topic. Um, and as a result, uh, this began a charge by the HARM study group to look closer at this. It was actually funded by a grateful patient. Um, so we really would like to thank you for that. Uh, in this study, uh, they're looking at AIS patients at three sites and looking at uh, different parameters, including strength assessment and balance assessment and endurance assessment, to come up with uh, a better idea of when these patients can actually safely return uh, two uh, different types of activities and make it more patient-centered. Uh, uh, in 2017, uh, this review article was actually uh, published and it, and it found that patients who have scoliosis and who have undergone surgery, uh, of them, uh, only 40% actually return to their baseline level of function. In addition, uh, they found that these patients engage in only one to three days uh, of physical activity, even mildly strenuous after surgery. And the fact is that um, it's not because of their surgery and it's not because of the limitations of their surgery. When they looked at it, they found that it was a subjective functional limitation and back pain that they were experiencing. But the fact is, um, that's not the case uh, for, for most, of, most patients who have uh, surgery for scoliosis. And that doesn't have to be your case as well. Every patient is different, so you sh certainly should discuss your activity limitations with your spine team. And certainly with modern uh, surgical technique and instrumentation, there is a great ability for you to return to your pre-op activity. So don't let uh, your surgery or scoliosis uh, limit you in that regard. Um, the Department of Health also uh, issues these guidelines. And in these guidelines, it basically says that uh, for um, kids... 6 to 17, they recommend 60 minutes a day of aerobic activity. And in that, part of that, you want some muscle strengthening and also bone strengthening. And by doing this, they basically say uh, that this leads to healthier adults. And we want even patients with scoliosis to be healthy adults. That should not impact uh, your drive to, to, to be a healthy adult. And so... Um, because you shouldn't have those acti activity limitations, uh, what we always say is that um, your increased activity is going to uh, decrease your body fat, it's going to increase your aerobic capacity and cardiovascular capacity, and it also has been shown to increase your self-esteem and decrease associated depression, which has been something that in previous literature would stricken patients with scoliosis. There are many activities and activity programs out there for core strengthening, including these um, great planking exercises and Pilates and yoga. Uh, and the fact is, though, that when um, studies look at the effectiveness of Pilates and these other programs as it compares to just being active and doing what you enjoy, they don't find a significant difference in results um, with these uh, structured activities. Sometimes people need that structure, uh, but it doesn't actually... Uh, bear out in the data that there's a difference. 
so what that basically says is that you really have to find an exercise and activity that you enjoy and that you'll continue to do because uh, it, you know doing it is the battle you know um, so we can't really tell you what to do but whatever you do uh, is going to be the most important thing that you just stick with it and um, according to the Center for Disease and Control and Prevention uh, all these things um, are basically positives of um, doing regular activity. You know, as I said, weight control uh, re reduces your risk of cancer, bone strength, muscle strength, improves your health and mood, uh, and it increases your uh, chances of living longer. So once again, uh, with that, I'll just say that don't let scoliosis hold you back from having that active lifestyle that gives you all these benefits, because um, right now, what we do know is that you can do that. All right, thank you. Thank you.